everyone, it's James here. How are you all doing? Welcome to another video. So in this series, I basically just show you and quickly talk about some of the CDs I've been listening to. This one um, I revisited. Um, I've had this in the collection for a couple of years. This is Mingo Lewis and the album is called Flight Never Ending. Um, I first became aware of this guy. He's on quite a few albums by the Tubes, American kind of alternative new wave type band from the 80s or from the late 70s and I've got one of the albums that he's on and then I became aware of him uh, as a member of Santana and then this record a couple of years ago I saw I think I think it was Alan at Static Traveller talking about it and showing it and saying what an incredible album it was so I picked it up and bought it and um, yeah it's pretty this stuff is pretty I don't know it puts hairs on your chest as my dad might say it's very hard, virtuosic fusion music. Mingo Lewis actually is a percussionist, interestingly, as in he uses lots of different percussion instruments, you know, hand percussion and stuff, but he is a composer as well. But this record, it's largely dominated by these kind of um, these synths, these just classic 1970s um, analog synths. Which I'll tell you now what the actual synth is that they use because it's actually given a little credit, I think. The ARP Pro Soloist Honer D6 Clavinet. It's got a clavinetti sound, a bit like um, you hear on Stevie Wonder Superstition, but they use it in a very uh, full on way. You know, it's kind of mutant space funk, very hard, very driving, very, very in your face, incredibly virtuosic stuff, quite dense, quite opaque at times. Definitely not an album to fall asleep to, and it's one that I'm not going to listen to it very often because it is so full on. But when you listen to it, you do just find yourself marvelling really at the <laughs> the level of virtuosity uh, on display. And uh, you know, it's not just virtuosic for the sake of it. It's got a groove to it. It's got a certain kind of power and passion to it. But um, yeah, pretty singular vision this guy had has produced by him, you know, all composed by him. So, um, yeah, but he spent most of his career, like I said, as a kind of side man. He was in Santana, he was in the tubes. So there you go. This one is thanks to Jeff at Calico Silver, who's done many videos about this artist. Got me curious. So uh, I picked up this record. This is Terhe Ripdal, who is a Norwegian guitarist. He's on ECM. I picked up this record, this is a trio album, and uh, it's called Terry Ripdale, Miroslav Vitus, and Jack de Jeanette. Just a trio record. I picked it up uh, because of Jack de Jeanette. He's obviously a very, very well-known fusion drummer. And um, his stuff is usually very mathematical, very involved. He's got a certain mathematical feel to his, his playing, you know, it's very technical. So I was curious, because I'd heard that Terry Ripta has got this kind of impressionistic kind of feel to his music and this album is like that. I mean, you can see from the cover, it evokes just looking through a rainy window at a kind of rain swept moor and you're watching the, the light changing in the sky and all the very subtle variations in light and there's a rainbow one minute and then there's a cloud burst the next minute and you're just kind of watching it. It's very, very um, trans transportative music. The first time I heard it, I thought it was incredible. The second time I heard it, it bored me. Third time I heard it, I thought it was really good again. And then fourth and fifth time, I just thought, yeah, I love this album. Um, you can just put it on, you can drift away to it, you can tune into it, you can listen to it. It works on all different levels. Compositionally quite advanced. Riptown's guitar playing, he's got his own sound. I've picked up another record by him now, but um, on vinyl, so I'll show that on a different video, but his sound is immediately recognisable. You know, electric guitar, not, not overtly virtuosic, it's more to do with the kind of mood that he creates, kind of hanging chords and, um, a kind of shimmering quality to his playing which is kind of head music you know he's got his own tone he's got his own sound and the way he works with these two guys Miroslav Vitus on double bass and electric piano and uh, Jack de Jeanette on drums and um, Jeanette's playing is amazing he does these little um, you know he plays the ride cymbal and it's just it's so precise and so delicate it's like it sounds like rain falling on a tin roof but just in perfect rhythm. It's just absolutely hypnotic. 
and um, I guess the best way of grasping what the music sounds like is just to look at the picture on the cover. I mean, the music sounds like that, basically, you know, that, that does a better job, I think, of trying to describe the music than me blathering on. But anyway, really great record. This comes from two, oh no, from 1979 on uh, ECM. So um, wonderful stuff. And um, do check out Jeff at Calico Silver. He's made many, many videos uh, about Riptail. He's done album rankings. He's done, you know, all kinds of things. Absolutely fascinating. This last one, I think I saw Calm show this. That's Gorbo 31. Um, and maybe somebody else as well. And I don't remember now what it was he said about it that made me think, OK, I'll check this out. Uh, but again, it's another ECM one. And again, I'm pleased I did. Um, this is Eberhard Weber and the Colours of Chloe, came out in 1974 and um, he is a German double bass player and again a bit like the Riptail one, this is a very um, impressionistic album, it's jazz but it's more like kind of chamber jazz, classical chamber jazz. There are some passages where it breaks into a kind of what you know what you'd think of as being a jazz type sound. Um, but often it's it's very impressionistic. It's very um, layered, actually. There's instruments layered on top of each other and all kind of moving together and expanding and developing. It'll break into stuff that you would that you would recognise as being jazz music, bop music, or whatever. You know, the drums and the piano, and and then it kind of goes back into this thing which is more impressionistic and more um, more like a kind of chamber classical jazz thing with beautiful um, themes and tunes and melodies. Um, the actual piece, the, um, the Colours of Chloe, really beautiful, really memorable. And um, the lineup is, is, is bass, piano and synth, um, two drummers and flugelhorn and cellos. Um, lots of slow bowing and lots of very kind of, you know, textured stuff. But um, yeah, fantastic. Beautiful stuff. <laughs> 